In this video, we will implement together basic validation of forms inside plain JavaScript. And the sponsor of this video is Filestack. If you want to make possible image uploading on your website, you typically need front and backend, storing files on your server or uploading them to CDN. And this is really a lot of work. If you want to make possible uploading files directly from Dropbox, Facebook or Instagram, then it is even more work. Filestack solves all these problems at once, and just in several lines of code you can get all these things out of the box. You can use Filestack with plain JavaScript or with any popular framework like React or Angular. Additionally, you can transform images on the fly, upload files to your own CDN and much much more. If you want to check Filestack, there is a link in the description box below. And now let's jump into the video. I already prepared a web page where we have a registration form. And as you can see here, we have just HTML and CSS, no JavaScript. And actually, we built this responsive form in one of other videos. So here we have an index.html page, and as you can see inside, we have this div form container. This is the whole container of our form, and after this we have form container details, title and subtitle. And you can see here this strange notation with two underscores, and this is because we used here BAM, which means block, element and modifier. It is not relevant for our validation form, but it helps us to structure HTML and CSS. So now we know that details, title and subtitle are children of form container. After this we have our form, where inside we have simply fields, and in every single field we have first of all a label, after this an input, and then a div with form error. And actually we don't see this div at all, but the main idea is that inside this div we will throw all our validation errors that we have. After our name we have email, password, and then the button to register on our form. After this we have line divider and links to login and forgot password. And as you can see, nothing is here, this is just a plain HTML. And additionally, we have all these styles, which are already prepared. Here is main CSS, and you can see all styles for our form. If you want to try it yourself and not just follow along, you can take this source code from the description box below. Now let's start to implement our validation for the form. So actually here I have a main JS and it is completely empty. First of all, we must find several elements on our page. And we're interested in this form, because we want to bind an event to this form, and we also need to find our name input, email input and password, so all these three fields, so we can read values from it. This is why here on the top we can write something like const form, and here we're using document query selector to find the element, and inside we could write just class form. But actually this is not a best practice. Why is that? Because actually here we have just a class and nobody knows that we are using this class inside JavaScript. Which actually means at the moment when somebody changed this form, maybe to foo form or something else, then this class won't work and our JavaScript is broken. This is why actually it is a good idea to write additional class just for JavaScript. And I like to name it JS, dash and then form. In this case people will see, ok, this class has prefix JS, so probably it is not for styling, it is for our JavaScript, and then they won't change this class. This is why here we wrote JS form, and we need to do the same with the input. Here we have our form input, we can write here JS name input, after this we have an email input, here I will write JS email input, and here is our password input, so here we can write JS password input. And we are good to go. Now we can jump directly inside our main JS, and here we are not selecting .form, but JS form. And we are sure nobody will use this class, because it is intended to be used inside JavaScript. And now I will copy paste this line three times, because we must find our elements. So here first of all name input, after this we have our email input, and these are all DOM elements, and the last one is password input. Now here on the right we must rename it to JS name input, then JS email input, and of course JS password input. But here is one more important thing, we actually just named them like a property, and nobody knows that this is a DOM element. This is where we can name them with dollar at the beginning. 
In this case, people typically understand, okay, this is something like jQuery style, we are naming DOM nodes with dollar prefix. In this case, everywhere in our code, we directly see, okay, this is a DOM node. Our next step is to attach our event listener to the form. This is why here we have our form and we can write here add event listener and we are listening here for the submitting of our form and listener here is our callback. This will happen when we are submitting our form. So what do we want to do here? First of all, we want event prevent default. And for this, we must get in our callback event as a first argument. Now inside we can write event dot prevent default and it will block the default behavior of the form. Why do we need that? Actually forms by default are submitted on the backend. And we don't want that, we want to handle our forms directly with JavaScript. This is why we want to prevent default behavior of this form. And after this I will just call a single function validate that we will create in a second. The main idea is that we pack all our validations inside additional function validate and not just right here directly inside the callback, which makes it more readable. Now we must create this function validate and read all values from our inputs to some local properties. This is why here let's create our function validate. We don't have any arguments here and inside we want to get our name value, email value and password value. So here is our name, maybe even name value to make it more understandable. And here we can get our dollar name input. This is a DOM node. So here we have dot value and this will get a value from our name input. But actually we can do it even better. We can use after this stream function. And if you don't know what a stream, it will remove spaces at the beginning and at the end inside our stream, which makes a lot of sense because in registration forms, we are not allowing spaces. And we need to do exactly the same stuff with our email and our password. So I copy pasted here email value and here we're reading our DOM node email input. And the last one is our password. So here we will have password value and here is our password input. Now let's check if it's working. So here I want to console log our validate function and inside our validate we can check what is our name value, email value and password value. Let's save this, reload our page and look inside console. So let's type something in name, in email and in password and hit register. As you can see here is our console log validate and we got three properties, which actually means our event listener is working and we successfully read our properties from input fields. The next thing that you must understand is how we will highlight our errors, which actually means, for example, we didn't type anything inside our name and we want to highlight our errors here. This is why here inside elements, we have our form field. So we are not working here with form input because we want to set the whole field directly as an error. So we can add here after form field, form to underscores field, two dashes and here is error. And here when I will save this, you can see this border around our input, which actually means we applied the error state to our form field. And we have styles which changes the border of this input when our state is invalid. This is exactly the idea. This class here helps us to style all elements inside this div container. So here we have two goals. First of all, we must apply this error class on our form field and secondly inside our div class form error we must write some error. This is why I want to create additional function which will do exactly that. It will render an error for a specific field. So let's create here on the top new function and we can name it highlight error. And here we are getting two arguments. First of all it is an input and it must be a DOM node. And secondly, it will be an error message. This is exactly what we want to render inside our error div. So here we get access to our specific input, but we must apply this error class on the parent. This is why here we can write input dot parent node, and this will get us a parent node of this input dot class list. And here we can use a method add to add a new class. And here we can write form to underscores field to dashes and an error. This is exactly what we wanted. The next step will be to add a text to our error class. And as you can see here, form error goes directly after our input, which actually means this is our next sibling. This is why here we can write input dot next element sibling. 
dot in a text because we just want to throw inside some text and here we're applying our error message. So this is exactly how our reusable highlight error will help us to style any input. Now let's check if it's working. So we can remove this console log and just write if we don't have a name value, we must throw here an error. This is why here we can call highlight error and provide inside an input. In our case, it will be our dollar name input and then the error. For example, here we can write name can't be blank. Let's check if it's working. I will reload the page and here we don't type anything inside our name and we hit here register. As you can see, we directly applied here the border for our input and we wrote here our error message. And we don't need to write any code here directly because we created a reusable function highlight error which can work with any field because we have the same markup for every single field in our project. Now we can copy paste this code and do exactly the same with password and an email. This is why here I will copy if two times and here we can write if we don't have an email value, then here we want to highlight error for dollar email input and here will be text email can't be blank and the last one not password value, then here is our dollar password input and here password can't be blank. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page, hitting register and we're getting three nice errors. Really often we don't want to just check the email for presence, but we want to validate it because after this we will send an email. This is why it is not enough to check that email is present, we really want to validate that we have a valid email. This is why here on the top I want to create additional function and it will be just the function is email, which will get an email as a parameter and here we must validate it. And here I will just paste a return with regular expression. If you don't know what regular expression is, this is a possibility to check our string for different validations or parameters. And you don't need to understand what is happening here, you can just google something like regular expression to validate an email and you will find such string. So what it does, we essentially have here a regular expression and we test our email against it and it will return for us true or false. So we successfully isolated this check to the specific function and we can just use it directly here. So after our if we can write here else if and here we can call our is email. But actually we want to show an error when it is not valid. This is why not is email and here inside we are throwing our email and email we have inside email value. And now inside we can just use our highlight error and here we don't want to write email can't be blank, but emailed is not valid. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page. I'm writing something inside email. I'm hitting register and we're getting validation email is not valid. In this case, we created two different validators for our email. And the last thing that we need to fix is just a small bug. As you can see here after registration, we highlight all fields. And if we will just write something inside our name, it is still invalid. And even after registering, it is still invalid because it is already invalid and we never revalidate it again, which actually means all our error messages are stale and we want to avoid this. So what we must do, we must clean all our error messages and classes. And for this, I want to create additional function. And actually we can copy paste our highlight error because it will be super similar. So here we don't want to highlight error, we want to clear error. So I'm naming this function clear error and we just need an input here because we don't need any error message. So here we're already getting our parent node class list and instead of add, we can use here remove. So it will remove this error state from our field. And the next point that we must do is we just need to remove inner text and assign here an empty string. This will revert all changes to the initial state. Now inside our validate function just at the beginning, we can call this clear error and throw inside our name input. Then we need one more for our email input. And the last one is of course our password. In this case, we will clear all fields before we start to highlight any errors. Let's check this out. I'm reloading the page. I'm hitting here register. So it is invalid. Now I'm writing something here and hit register. And as you can see for our name, the error disappeared. And this is the correct behavior of our validation form. And if you want to fully understand how we wrote CSS and HTML for this project, make sure to check this video also.